Welcome everybody to ETV Live showing of the Sunday Money Series brought to you by Cora, the Championship Online Racing Association. My name is Ted Manning along with my partner JD Webb in tonight for Matt Close. And JD, I think we have a great race tonight here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Absolutely. You know, uh, Ted, I've always loved these mile and a half tracks. They are built for speed, and I think that's what we're going to see here tonight. We've got the uh, the uh, trucks uh, uh, running tonight with Cora, so uh, it's going to be a fun night for sure. Yeah, definitely a switcher from last week where we ran at Daytona International Speedway, a uh, plate track, and they ran in the Gen 6 cars. That was the Dale Smalley Drywall 101 where Dallas Miracle pulled off the win in a wreck-filled final 10 laps. Dale Smalley coming in second, and uh, astonishingly enough, the 12-year-old Nicholas Doucette came in third. And I'll tell you what, uh, that was quite the race with uh, uh, Mark Jackson finishing fourth. Michael Churchma, he uh, drives that number 88 machine, and he finished in the top five in fifth place. David Wank with a solid uh, top 10 finish in sixth. Jay Anderson finishing seventh with uh, Mark Montaneri finishing eighth. Ninth was Garrett Denton, and tenth uh, was Jonathan Smith last week at Daytona. Yeah, and what those finishes did was set up our first point standings, the first official point standings of Season 3 of the Sunday Money Series. That's Dallas Miracle sitting in first place with 134 points. Nicholas Doucette with three points behind, 131. Mark Jackson in third with 134 points behind. Michael Churchman, 129, five points behind. And Dale Smalley rounding out your top five in points with 124 by, uh, behind the leader, 10 points. And uh, coming in six is Mike, Mark Montaneri. Mike Montaneri, where did I get that from, Cowboy? 15, uh, 15 points behind leader. And, uh, you know, right now, of course, uh, this is just the second race into the series. You know, uh, there's some points battles we're looking at here tonight. But uh, finishing in seventh, Jonathan Smith, he's 21 points behind the lead. David Wink, he sits in eighth position. He's 29 off with 105 points. Sitting in ninth is Everett Lane, 36 points behind the leader. Rounding out your top 10 for the points here at Championship Online Racing Association is Garrett Denton. He sits 38 points behind the leader. This week, like I said, J.D., we'll be at Atlanta Motor Speedway tonight for the Berkey Painting and Sandblasting 200, and they'll be racing in those Chevy Silverados, like we said earlier. My favorites for tonight were the ones who ended up winning the uh, the qualifier races uh, that were today, and some some of them coming in second place, but with very fast times. That's Galen Gidman, Ben Manning, Michael Churchma, and Bruce R. Bashar, so watch for them at the end. Like we said, Bruce R. Bouchard uh, last week was not going to make almost any race uh, tonight. But, uh, J.D., we had a, uh, I had an opportunity to actually sit down with Bruce earlier today. And uh, so we got a little, uh, a little segment that I'd like to call Two Minutes with Ted. And so this is my interview with Bruce R. Bouchard from earlier today. This is Ted Manning with ETV Live having a quick sit down with Bruce Bouchard, owner of the number 11 car racing in the Sunday Money Series for the Championship Online Racing Association. Uh, Bruce, we missed you last week at the uh, Season 3 opener at Daytona, and uh, I'm being told by uh, Alan Larson that you will be racing in tonight's race. Uh, is that true? Yep. I, uh, I got into one of the qualifiers uh, yesterday on Saturday, and... I, I was lucky enough to place a second place, so I got in for tonight. Fantastic. And uh, how many races will you be trying to run this year? I'm going to try and run as many as I can. I have a few weekends that I will not be available to do so, but I'm going to try and run as many as I can. I hear that there's some road course racing coming up later in the season, and uh, I love road courses as well. So I definitely want to try and make that one at least. I think it's trucks at walk-ins. It should be fun. So last week we saw Storm Motorsports out there racing, and we saw a couple of new additions to that team. Will you be racing underneath the Storm uh, Motorsports banner uh, this coming up uh, races of the season, or will you be racing without a team? I love all the guys at Storm. 
I will not. I don't think I will be running for Storm this season because I will not be any contender for the championship as I'll probably miss quite a few races, unfortunately. But I'm still really good friends with those guys and I'll probably still be working on setups with them here and there. So obviously, schedules will be different, but I'll do what I can, you know, for them and, and they'll help me out as well. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm technically still a Storm member per se because of the additions i don't know what the rules are for members but uh, i'm still good friends chances are i will be but i don't know i don't think so thanks bruce for uh sitting down with us and chatting a little bit uh before the race and i hope you have a very good race out there a very safe race and you do well thank you very much man thanks ted have a good one and bruce arbor spending a little bit of time with ted manning earlier this afternoon and as qualifying session continues here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Bruce Arbuchard now sitting in third with a fast time of 29.708. Atlanta Motor Speedway, Ted, this track was built in 1958, opened up on July 31st of 1960, a couple of years later. And I'll tell you what, this is a fast 1.5 mile uh, track. Uh, turns are banked at 24 degrees, straightaways just a little bit of a banking uh, pretty much drainage there, but uh, I'll tell you what, the flap record here uh, is 224 miles an hour, and uh, I believe that was in an IndyCar series. Yeah, it definitely was, and, and that's the key thing for tonight, JD, is this, that this is just an absolutely fast track. And so to have uh, have these cars zipping around here, it's way different than Daytona where they're just pressing down the gas. We're now in a whole other realm. You have to tap on the brake, maybe even hold on to the brake as you head off into the turns. So uh, it, you'll have it takes a lot more skill to be uh, racing at a uh, track like this. And so it's going to be interesting to see how they transition from that first race at Daytona to uh, the short track, or not necessarily a short track, but the speed this motor speedway here in Atlanta. You know, these mile-and-a-half tracks, Ted, uh, you know, they claim to be uh, some of the fastest tracks in the circuit, even faster than some of the ones that we see typically, you know, obviously the two plate tracks. But uh, we will see speeds approaching 200-plus uh, miles an hour here, especially off of turn, uh, off of turn one, uh, going in through turn two. Then it's that long, long uh, uh, straightaway on the backstretch. Coming off of turns three and four, you got to really watch the uh, the turn in and where do you come back out. That wall on the outside comes up very quickly, and then it's a boot scoot down the front stretch through the uh, trioval on into turn one at 200 plus miles an hour. A wicked fast track, and so I think we're going to see absolutely amazing driving here tonight. Definitely some spectacular uh, racing done by these drivers. They always put on a great show here at Cora. One note that we would like to make before the race begins is that Gordon Berkey, who usually drives in the 17 uh, in his 17 uh, car, will not be able to make the race tonight. So James Brown, who failed to qualify in his double zero car, will be driving for the number 17 for uh, for Gordon's truck tonight. So keep on a lookout when you see that number 17 truck. And you see Gordon Berkey's name up there on the ticker. Just remember that is James Brown uh, who will be uh, substituting in for Gordon Berkey tonight. You bet. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've seen both of these guys race here at the Championship Online Racing Association from time to time. And either one of these cowboys can put their car up in front. So uh, good luck to James Brown tonight in that number 17 machine. And uh, i tell you what, uh, we're getting close to uh, getting this thing started here. Um, we're uh, getting close to getting this thing started here. We're about a minute and a half away. Gary Bauer now sits on the pole with D Dallas Maracle on the front row. Bruce Bouchard still hanging on to that third place position. Looks like qualifying might be over. So uh, Gary Bauer uh, may be our pole sitter here tonight. Definitely has a, has a uh, wicked fast time with 29.663. One more truck still out on the track. James Wilkins making his final uh, round. And uh, so we'll see where he ends up. But it's going to be pretty hard to uh, beat Gary Bauer, who has a very fast time. You bet. Let's go ahead and set it on trackside. Cactus Cooties with our national anthem. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes 
and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly We're back live here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Let's give you the rundown on where these drivers will start today. Starting first on the pole in that in that 07 car is Gary Bauer. Starting second in the number 48, Dallas Miracles. Starting third, Bruce Arbuchar in the number 11. Starting fourth is Mark Jackson in his number two. Starting fifth is Paul is Nicholas Doucette in his number three. Uh, starting sixth in the number 78 is Michael E. Johnson. Starting seventh in the number 20, David Wank. Starting 8th, the number 88, Michael Churchma. Starting 9th, number 62, Michael D'Amico. And starting off 10th, the number 67, Ben Manning. And starting in the number 69 machine on the inside in 11th position is Dale Smalley. Buddy Waters in the number 46. He'll be on the outside in 12th. Starting in 13th position, the 24 machine, Alan Larson. On the outside in the number 10, Barry Winburn for 14th. Starting 15th tonight in the number 99, Garen Denton. Ross Cado, he'll be starting in the number 30 machine on the outside in 16th position. 17th, that belongs to the 72 of Ron McMahon. Galen Gidman, he'll be starting in the 04 in 18th position tonight. John Larson, he'll be starting in 19th, the number 98. On the outside in the number 20, in 20th position, the number 14 of Mark Montaneri. Ted? Starting 21st in that number 43 is Rex S. B uh, Buckingham. Sorry if I got that wrong. And starting 22nd, the number 35th, Nathan Sedlick. Number 17, starting 23rd, that's James Brown coming in for Gordon Berkey. 24th place, number 54, Daryl Crockwright. Travis Brown, that number 33, starting off 25th. Starting off 26th, the number 16, Lee Ridge. Starting 27th, number 18, Jay Anderson. Starting 28th, number 22, Ralph Shipman. Starting 29th, the number 02 of James Wilkins, and not taking times tonight, 30th through 33rd in order, Joel Wood, Kevin McCarthy, Sean Dower, and Everett D. Lane. And, of course, uh, my favorite car out there it happens to belong to Dallas Markle. I love the kinfolk on the back of that uh, machine of his, a number 48 tonight. So you can bet I'll be paying attention to that one. But uh, Ted Pacecar is coming on through turn four here, and uh, it'll make that left-hand turn. Green flag will fly, and we'll be off to running here for 125 laps at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And it's going to be a heart-pounding 125 laps for sure. Very fast track, very fast drivers. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly what will happen here on this one-and-a-half-mile track. Pace car is in, flag is in the air, and they have taken off. They are underway here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Gary Bauer getting a huge jump out front. Then jumping up, Dallas Miracle in that number 48, he takes the second position, and they are in a uh, in a line, single file order from first on back to fourth. Back here in sixth position, Michael Johnson up on the outside in the 78 machine, still holding the outside line up here. Had a little bit of traffic down below. Dale Smalley, or uh, excuse me, that's not Dale Smalley. Uh, well, something's going on with uh, with my uh, my. Uh, monitor here but i believe it's a 69 let's call it uh, 
Let's call it, uh, yeah, that is Dale Smalley. And 69 machine was down here on the bottom. Now it's now starting to get single filed out here a little bit. 78 still running that high side up here off of turn two. Down the back stretch we go. And uh, let's move back here to about 11th position, the 88 of Michael Church from up here. 67 on the bottom as we go through turns three and four. Yeah, Michael Church will be stuck up in that high lane, tries to jump down uh, in line, and he will end up doing so. Looking back at, or looking up, rather, at David Wank, who currently sits in the seventh position, he had a good start, a good qualifying time, and he is up there trying to make his way up and try to get to the front. But we are a single file line right now at Atlanta, and it looks to stay that way unless anybody can overtake the man in front of him. Alan Larson back here, uh, he's uh, running in 12th position, was running that low line going down the back stretch. Not quite sure what was going on there. The 99 Garrett Denton in behind, but uh, Alan's still running that bottom line here down the front stretch. Uh, now looks like he's uh, taking a position up in the middle, maybe just uh, getting his bearings here the first few laps in here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 125 lap race here tonight, so uh, you know lots of racing tonight, and I'm sure these guys, uh, wow, almost contact with the 99 machine. But uh, Ar Alan Larson in the 24 doing pretty good, doing pretty good job. And it seems that there is a caution out. I think I've gotten the word from uh, our producer Laura out on the speedway. So I'll jump ahead real quick and see exactly what we got and uh, what what exactly could have happened. It looks like uh, a car s sideways, stuck sideways. That is Nathan Sedlick in that number 35 truck. And uh, let me reverse real quick. We'll see what happens. And uh, there we go. I got it. Turns out, coming down into turn number one, he bounced off the wall, lost a little bit of ground, and just it looks like his uh, his uh, truck lost power or something got knocked loose because that number 17 of James Brown slammed into the back of him and sent both trucks into the wall, J.D. Oh, yeah, big time. And, uh, you know, looking at it here again from uh, on my monitor, I'm going to take a look at it from the 17's perspective, see what he saw coming into this thing. They're coming off the turns, and yeah, something happened to the 35. He either uh, jumped off the throttle too quickly, or something happened to that machine. The power shut off. But uh, unfortunately, like you say, the 17 big time damage to the front end of that uh, truck. So uh, first caution of the night here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And that's uh, definitely something that uh, Gordon Berkey did not want to see because even though he is not racing tonight, whatever place James Brown gets, whatever uh, points James Brown gets with that 17 machine, it will go towards Ber Gordon Berkey's overall point systems. And we are early on in the season. They're no longer doing a six tr uh, a six car ra or race, a six race schedule, I should say, this season, but a 15 race schedule, so it opens up a lot more possibilities to happen. They're also having a chase, but definitely something Gordon probably doesn't want to see right now, J.D. You bet, and a couple of takers on pit road, Buddy Waters and uh, Ben Manning uh, down pit roads for uh, four new shoes and a bucket of oats for those machines. The 46 machine not uh, leaving his pit box in pretty good, uh, pretty good shape. 33 of Travis Brown also on pit road as well as the 72 is Ron, of Ron McMahon. So uh, first caution of the night here, uh, came out in lap 35, and uh, you know, you're talking about the uh, uh, the points uh, and everything, and these cautions, uh, you know, the, the, the administration here at Cora now hold the drivers accountable for these cautions in a manner of uh, a tracking system that they've developed. And, you know, once you have surpassed your uh, allotted uh, cautions, and then you have to sit out a couple of races, uh, I believe, and then uh, earn that, uh, earn those back. So, uh, but I tell you, you can check it out at cora-racing.com. I tell you, if you have, uh, this is probably one of the most successful money league Sunday money series that uh, I have ever seen. And uh, these guys really do it right and do it well. So, uh, looking for a uh, good finish at Atlanta here tonight for sure from these guys. Yeah, they uh, they absolutely do a wonderful job here at Cora. And uh, last week uh, we had a chance to talk to Alan Larson, and he gave us a little backstory on Cora and exactly what they're about. Um, I mean, JD, have you? They have upped their pay system for the ones who uh, for the ones who end up winning uh, the race and so on and so forth. They've knocked it up from the top five getting uh, cash to the top ten finishing getting cash so you put in some money to qualify then you put in some money to be in the final race it's not that big chunk of change it's about when you're done with it at about twenty dollars you're spending maybe even less but when you come out of this if you come in first place that is fifty dollars you have just uh, you have just won immediately they upped to fifty dollars for first place thirty dollars for second twenty dollars for third 
and uh, fifteen dollars for fourth, ten for fifth, and so on and so forth, all the way down to tenth place, getting five dollars. That's a, that's fantastic. That's an absolutely great takeaway for doing something that you absolutely love. Absolutely, and like I say, you know, there there have been a few money leagues out there. Uh, there was one during the uh, back in the heyday of the NASCAR 2003 uh, era, and uh, they were quite successful. Uh, I haven't seen anybody be nearly as successful as Cora. Uh, in the uh, iRacing series, and uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, these guys really know how to do it. Uh, James Brown, Gordon Berkey, uh, they've got a, uh, a complete administration staff that uh, works on this thing constantly, but uh, how about giving them a little plug here? Championship Online Racing Association, qualifying three nights a week for a shot at the Sunday Money Super Speedway Series. Drivers pay an entry fee, then a percentage of the fees is up for grabs, on Sunday nights by the top 10 finishers. Win a trip to the bank, dude. Visit them at their new website, Cora Racing, Cora-Racing.com. Yeah, great. Uh, great. Uh, we were talking about the penalties before, the penalties that these guys receive for causing accidents. And when everything comes down to it, not only, I mean, you might be frustrated after all these wrecks end up happening and, and you have to sit out a couple of races, but when you come back, I guarantee that you're going to watch what you do, you're going to watch how you race, and it's going to make better racing. So when we get down to season four, season five, because I have no doubt that this season, that this series is going to stick around for quite a while, uh, JD. Uh, I just I think that when you get down to season four, season five, you're going to have just absolutely amazing clean racing, and not only clean but just fast, uh, awe-inspiring racing that these drivers can do. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, pace lights are off on the pace car coming off the final turn. Gary Bauer, Dallas Marco, Bruce Bouchard, Mark Jackson, and Paul Duchette. And actually, I think that's, uh, didn't you say that was Nicholas Duchette? Up there in front, top five, as the pace car pulls off. Green flag is out, and we are back at it at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The 07 of Gary Bauer picking up a green flag one more time with Dallas Markle following in second. Bruce Bouchard with a solid start in that number 11 machine up here in front. And as I look back, looks like the number two machine of Mark Jackson is going to get passed up here on the bottom by Nicholas Duchette. Looks like we will be jumping down single file line once again, except for a couple of stragglers like Dale Smalley, who is up on the high side trying to make things work past the number 88 machine of Michael Churchma. But let's look back a little bit at some of the guys hanging out in the back. In 13th position, that 04 of Galen Gidman in that Oreo car. I love it. Well, I was talking about him earlier. He's one. Of, he won one of those qualifiers races that we were talking about earlier, how you have to qualify into the final race. Well, he won one of them. So obviously when you see a truck who's able to win his way in, then obviously uh, obviously he's someone to look at. But Caution once again out on the racetrack, J.D. Caution is back out here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and we're looking around here trying to figure out who brought it out. Looks like it's going to be Daryl Conkright in the number 54 machine. Ted, take it, take it away and uh, tell us what happened. Yeah, that in, in the 54 machine, Daryl Cronkite ended up getting a little bit of the action from uh, a wreck that happened earlier up in the pack, and that was the number 22. It looks like uh, the 22 machine of Ralph Shipman, who ended up uh, starting this uh, wreck. And uh, I, I just I'm looking at it, and it's it's pretty amazing. He he's coming down off in that little uh, the, the the front stretch that we had there, that little dip that you have. And it looks like he just way overshot it or something broke on that car because it just shot right hard right into the wall and then ended up ricocheting down into that number 18 machine of Jay Anderson, which just caused a chain reaction. Uh, he came up, hit uh, Cronk right in that 54. The 16 could not get away from that. That's Lee Ridge. 46 in that mess, Buddy Waters, and once again, James Brown in that 17 Gordon Berkey machine ended up getting some of it. So big wreck on the front stretch, bringing out our second caution of the night, J.D. Wow, and it is a big one here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And, uh, you know, once again, uh, you know, when these cautions come out, uh, you know, we have to cycle around in our monitors, kind of do the uh, pause action here look for that uh, damaged vehicle that might have brought it out and of course uh, that was the first one i saw was a uh, cronkman but you're absolutely right it did start uh, quite a bit earlier than that a lot of bend up sheet metal here in the close in the uh, early laps here 10 laps in the books here at atlanta motor speedway and i'm sure there'll be quite a few of them coming down pit road definitely a lot of them taking advantage of the second caution they're kind of saying to themselves well 
one caution we can kind of hold off on coming down the pits and grabbing some fresh tires and fuel but now that a second caution has come out more fuel is being burned they decide they're probably going to all decide to come down or at least the majority of them come down get some fresh Sunoco fuel and uh, some Goodyear tires on their machines but only time will tell is they head off into turn three and four to head on to the pit lane and so we'll take this time to kind of talk about once again uh, these wrecks that end up happening um, that end up happening, whoever causes it gets a penalty, right, J.D.? That's correct. They uh, they do get a penalty, and uh, like I said before, they are tracked, and, and they, can eat, they can each go in and see uh, how everybody's doing. Every member uh, here at Cora can uh, log into the uh, website and, uh, you know, go in and take a look and, you know, make sure that they still have, uh, you know, uh, they're still good to go. So uh, it's a pretty good program they have here. And we're looking at the uh, we're looking at the at the pit lane right now. We got a couple of drivers who have taken uh, advantage of the situation have come down. That would be uh, the 72 of Ron McMahon. He comes on down. The 32 uh, or 35 rather of Nathan Seg Segment coming on down. So they came down the pit stall. They they came down the pit stall, and so uh, they'll they'll grab they'll grab some uh, tires and. They'll head right back out on the raceway, but not a lot of t uh, people coming on down pit road this time around, J.D. You bet. And uh, the 17, uh, that's going to be Gordon Berkey's truck being driven by James Brown here tonight. He was down pit road. Now, remember, uh, he was involved in that first caution went back on lap 5 of the 35 machine. So a little, uh, little more repairs done to the 17 machine. We'll see if James Brown can't get that number, scene, number 17 uh, up towards the front. But uh, Gary Bauer still holding down the lead up here in front. Dallas Markle, Bruce Bouchard, uh, that's going to be Nicholas Duchette, number three machine, and Mark Jackson, your top five here. Nothing has changed. Gary Bauer, he'll be picking up his third green flag when we get the uh, start. And for those of you sitting at home and are watching this and are just fans of simulation racing, you know, you're sitting there wondering, like, well, how can I get into uh, this kind of uh, series? How can I get involved with sim racing? Am I too young? Am I too old? Listen, all walks of life and all different types of ages races race in these uh, in these leagues. Perfect example, and I always use him as an example with this, is the number three of Nicholas Doucette. He's on his father's account, Paul Doucette's account, but he's racing tonight. And he's been racing in the series, and he's only 12 years old. Last week, he came in third place in a very impressive finish, racing to the line for that third place finish. And we got to talk to him afterwards, and he was very excited and uh, very humble with him winning. And so it's always exciting to see somebody so young as Nicholas Doucette take it. And now he's sitting in fourth place, a top five right now, as we're on lap 14 out of 125. So still a long way to go, but still very impressive for a 12-year-old to be up there. So it just goes to show that anybody from any walk of life and any age can try this out. Obviously, Nicholas Doucette has uh, has what a lot of people don't have, and that's extreme talent with uh, with a sport like this. But uh, you can always learn, and you can always try. And so I say to you who are watching tonight, if you want to give uh, this a shot, always try to give it a shot. Always try to apply. Always try to race with these guys because it is one heck of a time, and it's very fun. And, hey, you might even be mentioned on ETV Live one day. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know how intimidating a 12-year-old might be to some of the adults that race out here, but that number three machine, he can wheel a car with the best one, with the best of them for sure. Pace car is pulling off, getting set to go green one more time. Gary Bauer, like I said, picking up his third one of the night. Dallas Markle up on the outside this time. Can't get to the bottom like he did before. The 11 is right there. That's Bruce Bouchard. Paul Doucette, he's up on the or neck. Nicholas Doucette, the number three machine up on the outside. The two of uh, Mark Jackson going past the uh, three car here. So uh, I tell you what, these guys are looking for positions, looking for them early here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Yeah, Dallas Miracle was not able to get down on that bottom, uh, on the bottom of the track, which was kind of upsetting to him. He, uh, he split, so he jumped down behind uh, the number 11 of Bruce Bouchard, who is now jump, trying to look on the inside of Gary Bauer and try to get that first position away. He has a very strong truck, but Dallas Miracle was right next to him and fighting. Those are three strong trucks up there at the front, J.D. Absolutely, and as the battle continues up front, Alan Larson on the bottom of the 78 back here is about around about 11th position. Alan, uh, Alan seems to like that bottom lane down there. He's got the 78 up up on the outside, 
And I don't know that that 78 might be running in the preferred line here at Atlanta. Of course, I've seen these guys run pretty much from top to bottom here. It just depends on your driving style and how your truck is set up. But to Alan Larson hanging on to that wheel as he goes flying off into turn number one here, through turn number two, they'll come down the back stretch as the uh, 04 comes alongside the 78 now. So uh, Mark uh, Michael Jack uh, Johnson and the uh, 78 machine just kind of on cruise control for now. Still got a lot of lap left. 17 on the books, 125 in the, in the on the board. Yeah, he's definitely probably sitting back right now, as well as a lot of these drivers, and just kind of, he, he's seen the two wrecks that have happened back-to-back -back, uh, tonight so far, so he's kind of saying to himself that maybe he'll stay back there, try to avoid this wreck and chill, because they are very early still in this race. Uh, 125 laps obviously need to be done, only 18 have, has, uh, have been completed so far, so we still do have a long way to go. Tracking back to uh, a couple of the drivers in the back, uh, one person I want to look at is James Brown at that number 17. He's driving in Gordon Berkey's 17 vehicle. He has been involved in a few wrecks tonight. He's hanging back there, slowly trying to make his way back up there. But after the damage uh, he's received to his truck, it's going to be pretty hard to make his way back up there to the front and be a competitor tonight, J.D. You bet, and uh, we'll keep an eye on number 17 here for sure tonight. Let's move it on up to about 17th position. Mark Montaneri on the bottom here. A little battle shaping up as uh, Montaneri on the bottom. Had the 98 up on the outside, but uh, we've got somebody down in the grass here. Who is that? Oh, and it looks like uh, John Larson going around. The 98 going around right off the turn one here. And it looks like he's not going to hit anybody, but he's going to take part of the wall with him. The caution has not come out yet. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this. 98 machine, John Larson going around. Still down here on the apron, so uh, not sure if the uh, flagmen uh, are going to bring the caution out here or not. Yeah, and you know, I'm looking at the replay from that wreck, that 98 slamming into the wall there, and one thing that I've noticed is that all of these wrecks have kind of happened in that same area, that little, uh, that little slight turn these drivers make going through Atlanta. It's a very fast part of the track because you're coming off a turn four, gathering up speed, but you still have that slight turn to the left that you have to make. And so a lot of these guys, I think, are overcompensating and sliding right up into the wall because a lot of them are sliding up into the wall in that same place. And uh, Jonathan Larson, that 98, took a huge chunk out of the wall as uh, he slammed into it, jumped back down. However, he saved his truck, and he didn't take anybody else out, so caution is not out on the racetrack. It is. Green flag racing still. Now, they did throw, uh, they did finally throw the caution flag, uh, uh, Ted, but uh, it almost looked like it came a little bit late, but caution is out. This is going to be caution number three here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Dallas Markle uh, had the, uh, was out in front there and is now on his way down Pitt Road. Yeah, Dallas Miracle coming on down to uh, to his pit stall to uh, take a couple of fresh tires, probably to get up some gas. One thing that I did notice uh, with some of the trucks that did stay out, you got Mark Jackson, Bruce Bouchard, and Nicholas Doucette staying out along with Dale Smalley. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that uh, Bruce, Bruce Bouchard came on down. He was going to try to come into the pits, and he faked out, jumped right back up onto the track. And it took Nicholas Doucette by, uh, by surprise, who jumped right back on the track as well and almost lost his position. So, uh, But here, Dallas Merkel down and away, uh, taking all four tires. Michael Church were coming out along with him. You bet. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, this is probably a perfect time for us to step away and take a break, refill our coolers with uh, some cold ones. So uh, you're watching live, ETV Live. Don't wander off. We'll be right back after these commercial messages.
InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. And we are back live here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Hey, the Cowboy up here in the booth with Ted Manning along for the ride tonight. Actually, the Cowboy's along for the ride. Ted Manning's, uh, this is his usual place on a Sunday night here with the Championship Online Racing Association. But uh, Ted Dallas Markle opted to uh, come off the front row up there and come down Pitt Road. He's going to be restarting way deep in the field here, 16th. The Kinfolk up on the outside in that number 48 machine but uh i also want to mention dale smalley uh dale smalley who uh he is absolutely a front runner in this series has been for the last several years i believe he's won the uh cora championship uh season championship a couple of times in a row here yep back-to-back -back championships for season one and season two dale small is definitely a, uh, a a name that you recognize when you talk about the sunday money series if you mention Dale Smalley, everybody knows immediately who you're talking about. However, it is kind of uh, kind of weird to be seeing him hanging into the in the back, uh, 18th position. He did come down for a uh, for for a pit, but he hasn't really been up at the front fighting for first place yet. Maybe he's just holding himself off for the final 10 laps, which is understandable in a circumstance like this. But talking about Dallas Miracle, when he came in for a pit, I don't think he was expecting. Uh, no one else to come down with him. I think he was expecting a little, at least a, a few more people. But uh, so he's going to be starting into the back. Green flag out though, up at the front. Mark Jackson will take that green flag and will race off into one with Bruce Arbuchard right behind him, jumping in line. Nicholas Doucet in third place and in fourth place is David Wank in that number 20 car. Also another threat in the Sunday Money Series. Michael Domenko back here in that number 62 machine. He's looking at a sea of blue up there in the front off the restart here. But uh, I'll tell you what, pretty much single file racing all the way back. Not a lot of action taking place here yet, but hey, stand by, Cowboy. Let's look at 14th position back here. Everett Lane up on the outside. I believe that's going to be the uh, 14 of Mark Montaneri on the bottom here as he go motor and pass. I believe that's going to be... Uh, I want to say that's the uh, he's taking the 69 with him on the bottom. That's going to be Dale Smalley. So Dale Smalley making his moves here. 66 machine up on the top as uh, everybody goes uh, past him. So off to a good restart here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. This is the Championship Online Racing Association, and that's uh, Cora-Racing.com. You got to check these Cowboys out, dude. Get involved with these guys and win a trip to the bank. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely might have heard me on the uh, feed a little bit in his uh, in his in his uh, headset, or maybe a spotter was telling him like, "Hey, they're talking about you on there. You might need to move up." Because Dale Smalley is definitely starting to make the moves back there in the back. Someone else who is making the moves up there, the number 88 of Michael Churchma. He's a driver for uh, Storm Motorsports, a uh, a car motorsports uh, company that used to be uh, that. Bruce Arbuchard used to call home. He talked about that a little bit in his interview earlier. Michael E. Johnson, a new member of uh, Storm Motorsports. And Storm Motorsports, not to sound so cliche, really takes this series by storm because they definitely have some of the strongest drivers, especially up there in the front. David Wang in that number 20 car. He's sitting in fourth place. He's a part of them as well. And up here in 10th position, the number 10 of Barry Windburn holding down the Ford here keeping that Carolina truck of his pretty clean. And uh, I tell you what, I think a lot of these guys are pretty much on cruise control here for a little bit. 29 laps in the books here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, 125 on the board. So uh, just shy of 100 laps to go here in Atlanta. But uh, a little bit of a battle taking place up here in the front, the 30 in seventh position up here. That's Ross Caddo up on the outside. I don't know if he's kind of 
try to get a position here on the 0-4 uh, down here on the bottom. That's uh, Galen Gidman. But uh, that bottom line is usually where you want to run, but I've seen a lot of these guys be successful running that middle to upper line here at Atlanta as well. Yeah, and Nicholas, you said, is one of those individuals because he's up there on the top side with that number 30 car of Ross Cadeau uh, right behind him. And uh, so he's starting to lose a little bit of ground as that number 62 uh, car, or truck rather, of Michael D'Amico slips on the bottom there. And Michael D'Amico uh, seems to start being a household name within the uh, Cora Championship Online Racing Association series, Sunday Money series, because uh, we've talked about him uh, quite a few times back in the season two. And whoa! That 30 truck really, really cut in there. Uh, that was that was a close one with Ross Cadeau there. Slip sliding away, and I tell you what, uh, Cotto almost losing it, but manages to hang on to it. The 33 machine, Travis Brown, on the on the back end of him, has to get off the throttle off of turn four, and uh, we've got some more trouble on the track. Yeah, that's the 88 machine of Michael Churchma. He has spun out a little bit, saved himself coming down onto the grass there. And uh, he'll regain himself and regain his posture and jump back up on the track. And that could have been dirty, but that kind of just uh, talks about, oh, that's where I'm looking back at what happened there, J.D., and a truck up ahead uh, of them, someone hit their brakes and checked up and, he was about to slam into the back of some of those trucks, and so he had to jump down. And what a magnificent save by Michael Churchill, but he has lost a lot of spots. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, uh, you really got to pay attention at these, uh, at these mile and a half tracks. And, uh, you know, uh, it's very easy to uh, get out from under your truck here and uh, get out of shape. Watching a battle take place up here, the old 4 machine, fifth position. Glenn uh, Galen uh, Gidman going after the uh, number four. Uh, or the number 62 of Michael D'Amico. D'Amico's going to have to give that position up as the 04 makes it around. So uh, move uh, Gidman up into uh, position as the uh, 62 machine of Michael D'Amico uh, has to take a back seat here for a little bit. Coming on the bottom here is Nick Duchette in the 3 machine on the bottom of the 30 car. They, this, these two guys have been duking it out here for a while as well. So the 3 now finally finding his line down here on the bottom. Might be able to make some headway here, but the 30 is still prevailing up there on the top. Yeah, and looking back up at Galen Gidman, that 0-4 car, he was one of the guys I talked about earlier saying uh, was a favorite to win tonight. He's one of the ones who won the race here already in the qualifier. And so he uh, he's definitely making some headway, and he's catching up to those lead pack of three cars of Mark Jackson, Bruce Bouchard, and David Wink. All very strong drivers, all drivers we usually always talk about every week. And so it's a breath of fresh air to see somebody like Galen Gidman, who uh, I think finished 12th last week at uh, Daytona, and he's up there uh, trying to fight for position and try to get a win tonight. Oh, cutting a close up here in the front and in eighth position. Travis Brown was looking on the inside of the three machine, almost making contact off of turn two down the back stretch. The 48 Dallas Markle, the kinfolk cowboy up on the outside. He's chasing down at number three as he goes around the 33 coming off of turn four. So this is a race in a race here. Number three under attack from the 48 up here going through the dog leg on the front stretch. And that's like kind of like an army taking on a small little militia. I mean, it's a, it's no it's no competition. Dallas Miracle is a very far is a very strong driver, very competitive driver, and uh, but that high line. It, I mean, you got to have a very strong truck to be working that high line here in Atlanta, and it seems like he's doing it. He's making a little bit of headway, but that number three truck of Nicholas Doucette is not giving up, and he is holding his ground there on the bottom. Markle already up inside the top ten. Remember, he restarted deep in the field about 16, 17. So the kinfolk certainly on the move here at Atlanta. And I'm looking back here at uh, Buchanan. That's going to be the 43 machine, 10th position back here. He's going after 30, the 33 car down here on the bottom. That's the uh, Travis Brown machine. So uh, things are starting to shape up and uh, come alive a little bit here. 38 laps in the books at Atlanta. And uh, we still got quite a bit of racing to go here. And uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, looking for a terrific finish here before the end of this thing. And with the racing that we've had so far up front, no doubt there will be a terrific finish for us to see here tonight. 
Looking back in 16th position still, that number 69 truck of Dale Smalley, single file line trying to make his way through the pack and just kind of sitting in the back waiting for something to happen, looking for a time to strike because we are on lap 39 out of 125 here tonight, so still got a long way to go. But looking up uh, a little bit in front of him, someone that we haven't talked about uh, too much tonight, Ben Manning in that 67 uh, machine. He won one of the qualifiers. I think it was the Wednesday uh, night qualifier. He ended up winning. And so he is, uh, he's making his debut in uh, Season 3 of uh, the Sunday Money Series. And uh, he's doing pretty good. He's sitting in 15. He's got a top 15 so far. And we got a lot of racing to go. So we might be seeing him up there at the front. And so good to him to be up there. It's good to see new names, J.D., uh, racing. Because it means that it's an always evolving sport. It's an always evolving series. And so it's always nice to see these uh, new names coming in. And this is the first time that they've been at Atlanta. Uh, the past two seasons, they haven't raced here. I think the shortest track that they raced at last year was the USA uh, Speedway for the Legends cars. And looks like we've got uh, somebody in trouble here. I believe that's going to be the 43 of uh, Buchanan. I got it rolled. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. They're coming off a of turn two here. Looks like he's running in 10th position. He takes a souvenir off the wall and then that gets just wicked sideways, runs it down on the apron, tags the inside wall, and then takes a nosedive after he ping-pongs off. Uh, no caution uh, is going to fly. He's far enough down on the apron. I believe uh, that's pretty much a safe zone back here, but uh, he'll get it refired and uh, looks like he's going to keep it on the apron, probably come down pit road. He's definitely going to have to get uh, four new shoes for that pony, but... Uh, the 43 machine of uh, Rex Buchanan in big trouble here at Atlanta. And it seems to me looking at, uh, looking up at the front, looking towards the front, we got that 04 of Galen Gidman in first place. He ended up getting around four different trucks and, and ended up getting the first place. He's sitting there first place with Bruce Arbuchard right behind him, eating away at his back bumper, but good on Galen Gidman to get up there, and he is currently uh, leading this pack through turn one and two. And Bouchard, remember, he started up there in the top five at the beginning of this thing, so uh, Bruce Bouchard in that number 11 car, truck of his still hanging on to a top five position up here, and it is still uh, a sea of blue up here in front. From about the two car forward, Ross, uh, Ross Caddo sneaking up in there as well. But looking on back here a little bit, uh, pretty much single file, not a whole lot of battles going on. Let's take it back to Garrett Denton back here in the 99 12th position as uh, he stares at uh, a couple of machines out in front of him. And, uh, you know, he's uh, got a little bit of a battle here. Mark Montaneri up in front of him. Uh, and in front of Montaneri is the 33 of Travis Brown. Travis Brown was holding his own here just a little while ago. The 14 peaks on the inside. Off of turn number three, so it looks like Garrett or uh, Mark Montaneri for position over Travis Brown here coming off of turn four. Yep, Mark Montaneri will take away that position from Travis Brown, that 33 as he went wicked up high. And now he'll try to eat away at that 18 uh, truck of Coors. So the Coors Light is a good, uh, good beer. He's going to be trying to take away and look at his back bumper, but right in front of Jay Anderson is that three of Nicholas Doucette. And so very strong trucks running up that pack. Looking back at that 69, that little uh, the 69 car, Dale Smalley, they're two by two stacked up next to each other. That's a good little group running. Dale Smalley now making his way up to 13th position. Last time we looked at him, he was in 16th, so he is making his way up. Now occupying that 16th position is Gordon Berkey, who had a couple of problems earlier today, cannot seem to get away, or James Brown. Sorry, he's racing for Gordon Berkey. Uh, he had a couple of problems earlier today, and He's back there in the 16th position. You bet. And uh, number 17 of uh, Gordon Berkey, of course, being driven by James Brown. That was back on lap five. So uh, they've been able to uh, do quite a bit of work to that machine. And uh, James Brown uh, uh, looking for a uh, good finish for Gordon Berkey here at Atlanta. Let's take it back a couple of laps here. First car one lap down is going to be Nathan Sedlak. And he's back here in 30 in the 27 position in the 35 machine. Buddy Waters follows him a lap down, and then Joe Wood in the 79. Ralph Shipman, who uh, remember he was involved in that caution back on lap 10, so uh, he's uh, down one lap, probably due to the pit crew working on that machine. Lee Ridge is two laps down, and unfortunately out of the race on the hauler and headed for the barn, as we like to say here on ETV Live. Daryl Conkright 
with uh, just uh, way too much damage. 34 laps down, he will more than likely finish in the 32nd position here tonight. And looking back at the 16 uh, truck, Lee Ridge, who is two laps down, you just mentioned, he is very loose, all by himself on the front stretch right now, and so might need to keep an eye on him. He's uh, He's gone sideways a little bit uh, through a couple of these turns, turns has held on to it, but he's got heavy damage to his truck. You bet. And, you know, at Atlanta Motor Speedway, I mean, this, this is one of those tricky tracks where you really got to pay attention. I mean, uh, you know, when you're hauling the mail down the back stretch, you come up into turn three. Uh, you really got to be careful on the throttle, get into your mark, and uh, stay solid all the way through the outside wall. Off of turn four, comes up really, really fast. And then down through the tri-oval, you really got to keep a little bit of left-hand pressure on the wheel. If you don't, it'll slingshot right off in the middle of that section and right up into the wall. We've seen that happen already tonight. That was a 22 machine back on lap 10. In the meantime, out here in front, it's still an ocean of blue with Gidman out in front of Bouchard. Wank is following with Mark Johnson, pick, Mark Jackson picking up the rear in the number two machine. So uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, this is shaping up to be a pretty good run here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Why don't we go ahead and step away? Let's take another short commercial break. You're watching the live ETV live, so don't wander off. We'll be right back. HD Radio Network joined 5,000 plus other listeners where you could hear everything from Big 80 Metal to classic rock and roll, country radio, ETV live, sports radio, even a Unplugged Rock and Roll, HDRadioNetwork.com, one of the fastest growing internet radio networks, HDRadioNetwork.com, take it with you, cowboy, get the mobile app for Android, iPhone, iPad, and all the rest from TuneIn.com. serious online racing enthusiast you need Derek Spear Design maker of high quality custom built and 50 caliber strong simulation racing products like button boxes shifter pedals component parts and more the advantage a championship sim racing driver needs rated 10 out of 10 by inside sim racing TV check out his line of top shelf sim racing products reasonably priced at DerekSpearDesigns.com and buckle in for a no nonsense ride DerekSpearDesigns.com today Cowboy. As Gidman holds down the forward up in the front, let's move back here to 12th position, Ted. I'll tell you what, Gary Bauer uh, had a little bit of a battle going on here with the 35 of Nathan Sedlak. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, but uh, Nathan Sedlak actually running in the 27th position, uh, one lap down. But uh, a little bit of a battle going on. Don't know if Sedlak was holding these guys up. But, uh, hey, if you're in the race, you're in the race. The 07 of Gary Bauer now on the bottom down here. As uh, they uh, looks like the uh, 35 machine finally moved up to the top and let him by, but uh, almost looked like the 35 might have been holding up the 07. Yeah, which is something that you don't want to see when you see these uh, when you see these lap cars holding up guys that are still in the lead lap. Uh, looking into the pits right now, our leaders are in the pits: Mark Jackson, Nicholas Doucette in as well, uh, along with uh, David Wank, the 78 of uh, J of Johnson. And uh, also that w who went in there was, uh, oh, man, uh, Ron McMahon, 72, uh, David Wank, Michael Churchill. All of the main guys that were up there at the front uh, earlier have just taken green flag stops. So green flag stops are now underway here at Atlanta, J.D. And the all-important green flag stops. And I'll tell you what, Cowboy, you got to get her down, get the job done, and get back out four new shoes and a bucket of oats for all these guys. 
as they uh, come down pit road so 58 laps in the books we're uh, slowly approaching the uh, short uh, the short side of the stick here at atlanta motor speedway so uh, the uh, pit stops need to be picture perfect as we watch the 78 to uh, michael johnson coming down pit road he's gonna uh, he's already peeled off down on the apron you got to make that transition very easy as he comes off the corner here on turn four get on the binders cowboy whoa that pony up I believe it's 45 miles an hour down pit road. And he'll come down without a hitch. Remember, everybody, leading at the halfway mark will get you $15 in iRacing credits uh, brought to you by Barks Competition Karting. We are on lap 60. The halfway point is at 62, lap 62. So look for the leader on lap 62 to grab that Barks Competition Karting. And... Uh, fifteen dollar gift certificate to I race I racing and uh, if you if you're looking right now Dallas Miracle is up in front leading this race still hasn't come down pit uh, road yet he did come down during a caution but you gotta make yourself wonder is he gonna come down for uh, uh, for the for green flag pit stops to freshen up his tires and get some more gas in there and uh, I don't know if is he gonna wait out there for that 62 lap to lead so he can get that uh, halfway point and he is as well you're going to do that it's going to be this time by the number 48 machine dallas markle the kinfolk that i like to call him he will get that 15 dollars i racing credit so congratulations to dallas markle being at the half being the leader at the halfway point and uh, dale smalley in the 69 is in second mark montaneri in third fourth is running uh, jay anderson number 18 car running at your top five gary bauer Green flag pit stops are underway, so uh, this all is going to change here as uh, as we uh, complete our laps here at Atlanta. 18 machine, Jay Anderson on his way down pit road. And uh, same deal here. Whoa, that pony up, Cowboy, 45 miles an hour. You do not want to get a speeding ticket here. It'll set you back quite a ways. And it's very difficult to make the laps up here unless you can get it back on a lucky dog. But uh, so far, since the lap uh, 22, We've been clean and green, Cowboys, so uh, looking for a great finisher at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Yeah, and Jay Anderson will jump up on his right side, grab right side tires and left side tires. So that's four tires for Jay Anderson. He'll get some Sunoco racing fuel and be back underway. A little bit of damage to the front of his truck there from a earlier wreck. Doesn't seem to be affecting him too much as he's been running in the top 10 almost all day. Now he is sitting in uh, 17th position and will be a lap down because of uh, taking this green flag stop. Whoa. But with the rest of these green flag stops, uh, it should be uh, it should they should be uh, falling back in line. The 22 machine uh, back on the back stretch, guys. Dallas Markle's coming off of uh, come off of turn two and down the back stretch. Con makes contact with the back of the 22 and uh, manages to uh, keep a square and uh, on the track, but the 22 machine having a lot of problems here, guys. Yeah, speaking of a lot of problems, trying to bring his 22 uh, truck onto pit road, he ended up spinning his tires and spinning out and hitting the uh, inside wall, so even more damage inflicted to that 22 truck as, as there's just a lot of damage to that truck, J.D. As he inches down pit road, uh, it's going to be an extended pit road stop for that number 22 machine. As the ball peen hammers come out, they'll go to work on that truck to try to get some of that damage repaired. Green flag pit stops are underway. The 48 machine, I believe, has uh, come down pit road. That's going to be uh, Dallas Markle. He has made his stop. So uh, after uh, running for uh, roughly 65 laps, the 48 makes his first, I believe this is his first stop, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, definitely his first stop, which is uh, something uh, something that we like to see uh, here in the racing world, uh, to be able to go 66 laps and then decide to come in for a pit. But these green flag pit stops have really screwed up the running order. Uh, we only have 11 cars right now, or trucks right now, on the lead lap. Dallas Miracle is the first car lap or truck a lap down in 12th place. Dale Smalley is leading this race with uh, Mark Montanari, that number 14 truck, only uh, right behind him. But then after that, third place and on back is about two seconds, three seconds, four seconds behind. Miracle may be in the catbird seat here because I don't know, uh, you know, a lot of these guys up here in front are on a different pit sequence based off of the cautions that we've had. Of course, that last one happening uh, way back on lap 22. 
So uh, with about 40 plus laps on the in the books for uh, all these guys up here in front, uh, maybe a few more laps, and then they're going to have to come down pit road. I don't believe that they're going to be able to finish it otherwise. So uh, Dallas Miracle may be just kind of on cruise control right now, sitting back there in 12th position because I don't believe that everybody in front of them have come down pit road yet. Yep, Dallas Miracle. If he doesn't stay out, and if we do stay green for the rest of the race, could be okay on fuel. He will definitely, it will definitely be very close. Uh, he'll be kicking it, so we might see these trucks come down at least one more time uh, down pit row. Uh, we are on lap 70 out of 125 laps, so we still have a little bit of ways to go. Uh, one thing, JD, that could screw these guy up, these guys up royally, is definitely a caution at this point. Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, that would certainly catch Dale, uh, Dallas Markle one lap down, and unfortunately uh, it's going to be tough for him to get it back unless he can get that lucky dog. But, uh, he, you know, the competition he's got with him is uh, Mark Jackson, Bouchard, uh, Joel Wood, and the 79 machine back there at 15th. I mean, a lot of these guys, uh, Kata, Wink, they're all on uh, the, uh, you know, one lap down. So uh, as, the, as the pit stops, uh, you know, work themselves out here, why, uh, you know, that's one thing that uh, Markle and all these guys are not praying for is a caution. So uh, in the meantime, Dale Smalley occupies the front row up here. He is your leader with Montaneri and Bauer up here in the top three. Garrett Denton in that 99 machine uh, doing a fantastic job here at Atlanta Speedway tonight with Ben Manning in the 67 finds himself up in a top five as, as well. And Ben Manning is another person that I said would be up there at the end, uh, somebody definitely to look for. And it might just be because of these cautions, uh, him being up there. But you know what? Hey, I would take it if I were him. Why not? Mark Montaneri being shown as your leader. Gary Bauer in second place uh, is about two seconds behind. And then after that, Manning is five seconds behind. And then eight seconds, 14. So these guys are pretty far spread out, J.D. So, I mean... People would hate to see it at this very moment, but, I mean, when it all comes down to it, uh, if a caution comes out, there, there there's going to be a huge toss-up. Mark Montaneri, our leader now, down in the pits. Montaneri making his pit stop. Dale Smalley in the 69 on his way out of the pits here. So as things get shake, uh, shaken up here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, uh, this is uh, typically what happens here. Uh, you know, these guys make these piss offs. It throws everybody off sequence here, you know, out of whack, out of kilter. Of course, timing and scoring is a little bit out of whack. There's only one timing marker on the track here tonight, and that's right at the start-finish line. So uh, as the uh, scoreboard uh, gets updated up there on the uh, on the broadcast ticker, why, uh, you know, just be aware that uh, some of these guys up here in front have not pitted those machines are in their pit uh, sequence as of now. So uh, right now, Gary Bauer, he's on his way out pit road, although he shows in the number one position. I believe it's Dallas Miracle in the 48 who will take that uh, that position over. So uh, just as we figured, uh, Ted, uh, the 48 machine back up to the front. Yep, that 48 machine back up to the front. We also see other names that are uh, noticeable to us. Bruce Arbichard, Mark Jackson, Ron McMahon, Mark Montaneri. All names that we have seen throughout this race up at the front. Hello, Dale Smalling, that number 69, now in a top 10 position. And so I think everything has worked out to his liking. And so look for him as time runs down and we start getting closer to that 10-lap dash here in Atlanta that it's famous for. Just like to make a note, Lee Ridge, uh, who was running way back in the 30th position in his number 16 car. He was four laps down. Well, his truck has finally given way, and he has taken it behind the wall and will park it for tonight. Ralph Shipman as well, back there in the number 22. He was six laps down. His truck has given way, and he has pulled it behind the wall as well. And Everett D. Lane in that number one machine, he's running in 17th position. Remember, he started way at the tail end of the field here tonight, so uh, uh, in 33rd. So the number one uh, truck of Everett D. Lane uh, looking at uh, possibly a top 15 if he can get the job done. But uh, I'll tell you something, some of these Cowboys are just kind of on cruise control here a little bit, probably waiting for the last 15, 20 laps or so before they cut them ponies loose and spur them on for uh, a run to the uh, checker flag. But uh, uh, I tell you, Everett Lane uh, doing a fine job here with that number one machine of his, keeping it clean, keeping the uh, 
bumper pointed in the right direction and all four shoes on the ground. So uh, we'll keep an eye on him. One guy we normally talk to all the time, Alan Larson out on the track in his number 24. He is the last car in the lead lap in 20th position, 23 seconds behind the leader. And he is holding it strong heading into turn one and two as we speak. So he is holding it strong back there, holding it in a straight line, not really veering off in any crazy direction. He is, uh, so he's making his way up. He's he's back there, but he's not falling back anymore. And uh, right now, I think a couple of these guys are looking at it as the order had the running order has come back down to what it was before. I think a lot of these guys are looking at it and saying, "Hey, we could really use a caution right now because uh, it'll group everybody back up together, definitely give everybody some good racing." But unlike uh, Unlike uh, unlike NASCAR and unlike the Sprint Cup Series, we don't get random uh, random cautions for debris out on the track. Just getting word that uh, Alan Larson actually, like I said, sitting in his 20th position, ran three seconds faster than our leader, Dallas Miracle. That's something, J.D. You bet. And I'll tell you what, uh, somebody else that's running faster than the leader is is going to be the 11 machine of Bruce Bouchard, running about two-tenths of a second faster than Dallas Miracle up here. Uh, Marco run a 30.4 to Bouchard 30.2. So uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, the 48 machine better start uh, taking a peek up in that rearview mirror here. I got a funny feeling that uh, Bouchard and that 11 car is going to be, or 11 truck is going to be there, uh, you know, sooner than uh, than later. Mark Jackson, he runs about two seconds back in third position in that number two. So uh, he's looking at the back, back bumper of that 11 machine. He also is turning pretty decent laps at a 30.3 mid threes here. So uh, all three of these guys up here in front, it could be anybody's race before the night is over. Montaneri uh, in the 14, uh, uh, 14 machine, he's sitting in fourth place. He's seven, almost eight seconds back from the leader. So he's got some work to do along with uh, Dale Smalley back here. That's your top five here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And the thing with uh, Mark Montaneri and Dale Smalley is that they are all by themselves out there, not really uh, having anybody to work off of or work with. But right behind Dale Smalley in that number 99 truck is Garrett Denton with hauling along with them David Wayne Groscado. And uh, it looks like uh, a, a lap car hanging with them as well. But those three cars of Garrett Denton, David Wayne, and Roscado are all working together, all in a straight line. And right next to one another to make their way up at the front. All three of them have very strong trucks, so we should could be seeing a shakeup anytime soon. You had no watching the uh, 66 machine of uh, Sean Dewar back here uh, doing a pretty decent job as well. And uh, Sean, I believe, uh, started in the back of the pack with Everett Lane uh, in 32nd. So uh, right now, uh, Sean Dewar running in 11th position up here at number 66 machine. I believe that's uh, the 07, Gary Bauer, up on the outside. So uh, looks like uh, there may be a battle shaping up here between Dewar and Bauer if Dewar can get that 66 truck uh, up to the uh, bumper of the 07. But uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, let's give a couple of plugs out here. How about the iRacing Today radio show? If you haven't heard these two guys, this is uh, this is quite the show. kind of reminds me of Garrison Killer, uh, the uh, Lake Wobegon days. But uh, this is a, a show hosted by Trevor Cameron and Chad Dalton by the fans, for the fans. And it's unabridged, unbiased, and completely off the cuff. Live radio show about everything iRacing up close and not personal. Actually, it is pretty personal. Live call-ins, no rules, no back talk, no BS. iRacing Today radio show, Mondays at 8.30 p.m. on ETV Live Radio. ETV-ePlay.net. Also featured on iTunes, Windows Media Guide, and TuneIn Radio. You can even get the mobile app from TuneIn.com. I'll tell you something, Chad and Trevor, they talk about their own personal experiences within the uh, iRacing uh, uh, service and, uh, you know, some of the latest builds and things that come out. And they, they offer a, a pretty pretty cool, clean perspective, uh, you know, how they see it uh, on their show. So uh, tune in every Monday at 8.30 p.m. on ETV Live Radio. And a little plug that I'd like to do for you, J.D., in a show that I have uh, very much taken a liking for is that Rewind BS and Back Talk radio show that you do. Join the Cowboy, G.D. Webb, that's you, and Jimmy North Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. for an hour of Rewind. Looking back at previous broadcast events, drama, and topics too hot to touch. The Cowboy ramps it up in the BS and Back Talk segment with thoughts and opinions on some of the hot topics in the online racing arena. It's an all-new show, fun and entertaining. Rewind, BS, and Back Talk, 9 p.m. Tuesdays on ETV Live. 
Tell us a little bit about that, JD. I'm pretty interested. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's probably more beers and back talk than anything else, but we covered the, uh, you know, some of the broadcasted races here on ETV Live in the first segment. Then we move on to, uh, you know, whatever might uh, might be hot over, uh, you know, in the iRacing uh, I forum. We'll pick up on a topic or, or whatever. doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the simulation racing world. This week, we're going to be talking about the Martinsville mayhem that occurred and the uh, Triple Crown series is broadcasted live here on ETV Live every week. And uh, I'll tell you, you had to have been there, uh, you know, to uh, know what we're talking about. But uh, we're going to be uh, wrapping it up with the Martinsville Mayhem uh, here uh, this Tuesday night at 9 o'clock. So uh, a lot of good stuff planned. Wesley Outland will be with us uh, Tuesday night. So tune in at 9 o'clock on ETV Live Radio for sure. That sounds awesome. Very much looking forward to that. But just as much as I'm looking forward to this race. We're on lap 89 out of 125 laps here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's a little overcast, about 65 degrees outside on the track, which definitely uh, definitely takes care of uh, some of the things that these drivers have to look out for as they're tuning their cars and fine-tuning it for the race itself. I'm, I don't think a lot of these drivers knew that it was going to be about 65 degrees outside, especially in Atlanta in, a, uh, in, in August, but... Uh, Besides that point, it's uh, it definitely affects the cars or the trucks in this matter, and so they had to fine tune it perfectly to try to do that. But uh, I'm getting word that the 72 truck is in the wall. That's the 72 of Ron McMahon. He just tapped it, and uh, it looks like he is okay and will keep on going. But uh, definitely another setback for the already lapped down Ron McMahon. And we have a change of the lead up here. Bruce Bouchard has finally caught Dallas Miracle neck and neck going into turn one. The 30 on the bottom. Or, uh, yeah, let me get this right here. The 48 machine uh, still out in front. I got confused with another truck up there uh, for some reason. Boy, my, my, uh, my stats just aren't uh, cooperating here tonight. I definitely got excited when you said that, Jane. I, yeah. I was pretty happy. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's uh, something must be up with uh, with my monitor here, but uh, that's the second time this has happened. But uh, still hot in front. Let's call it like it is. Dallas Markle holding down the fort with Bouchard. Bouchard has caught Dallas Markle. He's now sitting just one tenth back, right on the bumper. So uh, Bouchard certainly looking for an opportunity here. Mark Jackson. On the other hand, still uh, trying to work his way up to the front. 1.4 seconds back. We'll call it 1.5. Dale Smalley in that number 69 machine. His remember, he's a uh, two-time champion here at uh, Cora Championship Online Racing Association. Still trying to get his machine up to the front, sitting eight seconds back from lead. 93 laps in the books here. So it's still pretty much anybody's game. But uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, pretty much single file. Not a lot of battles happening until we get back here to David Wank in the 20 machine. He's looking at the bumper of that number 99. That's Garrett Denton out in front as he takes a peek on the inside, coming off of turn two, can't get the job done, just not on a horsepower. Yeah, going to take a look back at uh, 11th place. That's Michael Church my, in uh, that number 88 Storm Motorsports machine. Right behind him in the 67 is Ben Manning. They're both making their way up there. Michael Churchma is always a contender in these two series. In uh, season number one, he uh, he almost beat out uh, Dale Smalley for the championship, but uh, Dale Smalley took the win. And so he's always somebody uh, to look forward uh, for and also a force to be reckoned with. And so he's definitely looking uh, to try to catch Sean Dower in that number 66 machine and try to get up there and get a top 10 finish tonight. That will definitely help him out in the points because as of right now, he is currently sitting, I think, back in the fourth position in points. He's only five points out of the lead. Obviously, that will change uh, by the end of this race, but he's definitely looking up there to get a top 10. And let's move it all the way back here. 29th position, number 17. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, number 17 is 11 laps down. Driving that uh, truck tonight for Gordon Berkey is James Brown. Now, here's the deal, Cowboy. James Brown is the CEO of Cora Championship Online Racing, Racing Association. I believe Gordon Berkey is the vice president, if I'm not mistaken. So, now I'm wondering, will there be a takeover after this race because uh, Brown could not put the 17 up in front? Who's to know? We'll find out more 
at the conclusion of the race here tonight. 85 laps in the books, 125 on the board. Now we are on the downhill side. And I'll tell you what, Cowboy, Dallas Markle still out in front with Bouchard chasing him down. <laughs> maybe maybe guys will be talking about the revolution of the uh, Cora ser Sunday Money Series on your BS at Back Talk show one day because of uh, yeah. the events tonight. <laughs> so yeah, that's that could be. To, <laughs> that's definitely something to look for. So uh, Dallas America, like you said, up in front. Bruce Bouchard ticking away. He's now two tenths, and he will. He'll jump down low. Whoa, almost slide up into that 48, but he'll take away the position. Lead change out there on the track. But it doesn't look like Dallas Miracle will give up without a fight. I'll tell you what, uh, that 48 machine, uh, he knows how to keep it right on the bumper here, coming off of turn three and four here. Mar oh, 48 machine making an unscheduled pit stop. Dallas Markle headed down pit road. This has got to be an unscheduled stop. He has already made his uh, pit stop way back about uh, 20 laps ago, so I'm not sure what the uh, 48 is, uh, is doing down here on pit road. This certainly cannot be a scheduled pit stop here, Ted. Yeah, he'll come on down, jump into his pit stall, which is only second one back, and we'll see exactly what might happen. He'll jump up on the right side and uh, takes right side tires and, and I mean, it left side tires as well. Wow, this is going to be a pretty long stop, especially under green and especially a uh, an unscheduled one that is taking place. So that's uh, definitely something crazy to be seeing uh, J.D. as Dallas Merkel will come back up out on the track and will try to catch up speed again, but he's currently being shown in 12th position and still falling uh, 14th now. So Dallas Merkel with a unscheduled pit stops, taking four tires and fuel and going. So uh, it makes you wonder if he had a tire cut down or something, J.D. Or something. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on the 48 and see how the night progresses for him as he uh, slips down a lap to Michael D'Amico now. Of course, the 62 machine is in on pit road, but uh, I think uh, Marco, Mar yeah, Marco will get that lap back from D'Amico, but uh, unscheduled stop looked like from Dallas. Marco, certainly they could have had a, they should have had enough fuel to go the distance unless they made a mistake uh, last time down on the green flag pit stop. But uh, let's go ahead and step away. Let's take a quick commercial break. You're watching live ETV Live, Cowboy. It's the only game in town, so don't wander off. We'll be right back. Back here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, we are under caution here as Mark Jackson, who has been up in the front the majority of the day, has brought out a caution, just absolutely lost control. He tried to hit his pit stall. He tried to come down. We've seen some trucks come down as uh, in the form of Dallas Markle and Michael Churchma. But as he came down, he locked up his tires and just jolted to the right and came up. And uh, to the misfortune of number 33, Travis Brown just slammed into him. And uh, both trucks ended up taking a nasty spin on the front stretch. Other trucks barely getting by, trying to sw swerve out of the way, some going through the grass. That could have been absolutely deadly. But we are under caution here on the track after Mark Jackson took a spin trying to get into the pits. We are on lap 104 out of 125, J.D. And the 33 machine of Travis Brown, unfortunately, could not avoid that. 
And uh, I tell you, that's a real unfortunate incident for the 33 after keeping his truck so clean all night long. Now uh, has stained uh, quite a bit of right side damage to that machine of his. So uh, probably looking at an extensive pit stop here uh, under, under uh, I believe this is our fourth caution of the night here at Atlanta. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Jackson will take his truck uh, out and behind the wall. He is not on the racetrack anymore. He has brought it behind the wall to be looked at after severe damage to his truck and a huge wreck that has just taken place on the front stretch. And that has definitely tossed it up. He was a big competitor up there at the front as uh, time is rounding, uh, or rounding down now. Time is uh, starting to give away, and we are looking towards the end of this race. For him to not be up in the top, that's crazy. That's that's a huge uh, that's a huge undertaking, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this shapes up the rest of the time. You bet. And uh, we're going to try to get Mark Jackson on the radio here. Uh, Mark, this is Ted and uh, the Cowboy up here in the booth. You got us. What? Yeah, Mark. man. Hey, Mark, uh, out of caution here, bud. Uh, we saw what looked like an easy transition down on the pit road. You come across the apron and lost it. What happened? Yeah, I just got away from me there. feel bad for bringing the caution out uh, real late for everybody. Just made a mistake getting on pit road. You know, uh, you, you spent uh, the majority of the race up there in front. This has got to be a pretty devastating event for you this late in the race. 103 laps in the books here. Uh, what was the strategy uh, for the finish of this thing tonight? Just kind of hang out and see what happens up front and make a run at it or what? Yeah, we was uh, we were hoping we could finish under green and uh, let the green flag stops play out, but unfortunately I was the one that brought it out, brought out a caution. So bad luck for the two truck tonight. Bad luck for the Grave Digger tonight. And I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, you had an outstanding run here at the beginning of the race. Best of luck on the next one next week. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Uh, enjoy the race. You bet. So uh, that was uh, Mark Jackson we just talked to in that number two uh, Chevy Silverado. And uh, bad luck for him as he tried to come down on pit road and uh, took a spin down and uh, brought out our caution, uh, another caution for tonight. We are on lap 107 out of 125. We are winding down here. Dale Smalley in that number 69, someone who's been in the back all day, is being shown as your leader. Bruce Arbuchard in second, Mark Montaneri in third, David Wink in fourth, and Garrett Denton rounding out your top five. Ben Manning's in sixth, Gary Bauer in seventh, Sean Dower in eighth, Alan Larson in ninth, and Barry Winburn in that number 10 in 10th. You bet. And I'll tell you what, uh, what a night has been here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And uh, only four cautions. Uh, it's still not a bad night for these guys. They had it sorted out after lap 22 after the 98 brought that one out. Of course, the big one way back on lap 10, the 22 car uh, got involved uh, with the outside wall. And unfortunately, uh, it uh, it also uh, brought along several others, but uh, I tell you what, uh, how about a plug for the uh, Bob Rule Racing Seat? And I'll tell you something, uh, you know, if you want a cockpit designed by a real race car driver, this is the one you got to look at. This is a simulation racing cockpit designed by championship race car driver Bob Earl. And I'll tell you, you know, uh, I would not want anybody else but a race car driver to design one for me. He knows what it means to be comfortable in the cockpit after, you know, spending several hours, you know, uh, in, the, uh, in the car at a time. The design features a fully adjustable seat and frame. Additional monitor stand and shifter mount is sold separately. And he is the proud sponsor of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series on ETV Live. A high-quality and affordable virtual racing cockpit price to get this, just 349 bucks plus shipping. You can take a look at it over at BobRollRacing.com. Get one tonight, Cowboy. BobRollRacing.com. 
and you can't have a pro racing setup and be a race car driver without a crew chief. So do you need one? Well, here's the next best thing. Mark Montaneri's Sim Racing Setup Analyzer. As you test the car, enter data into the analyzer and gives you real recommendations to make changes. So join the ranks of, of some of the fastest guys in sim racing. Find them at www.setupanalyzer.com. Back to Green Flag Racing here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Dale Smalling, that number 69, taking a commanding lead with Bruce Arbuchard in that 11 truck right behind him and trying to chase him down. We are on lap 109 of 125. It's winding down, J.D. Absolutely, and David Wink up here in fourth position. He's another one that's quietly been hanging around up here in the top five pretty much all night long. And uh, for Storm Motorsports, and I love the paint job on these trucks. Outstanding paint job. I don't know who's painting them, but uh, some good-looking material out here for sure. And uh, I tell you, uh, it's good to, uh, you know, Mark Montaneri, uh, we're talking about that setup uh, racing uh, analyzer. Uh, Mark Montaneri actually uh, builds that uh, piece of software. So uh, uh, Mark Montaneri currently running up here in third position in the 14. He has quietly, uh, you know, been up here in the front too, not making a whole lot of noise. But then as we move backwards here a little bit, pretty much single file uh, all the way back. Uh, a little bit of a tight uh, battle going here. Gary Bauer in sixth position back here, looking on the inside of the number 20. Can't get the job done. 20 covers the bottom, but nope, coming off of turn two. Here they come down to back. Just 20 running in the middle of the track. Can't squeeze the seven off, so going into turn three, so the, seven will the 07 will prevail on the bottom. Yeah, the, the, there's a huge uh, race coming out there, right, uh, with between uh, both Gary Bauer and uh, David Wink at that 20 car. David Wink, a very strong driver, but looking up at that 99 of Garrett Denton, who's sitting in fourth place currently right now, all over the back bumper of Mark Montaneri. He'll jump up high, look up high, and Gary Bauer will look with him. They have some very fast trucks uh, looking at, at the back of Mark Montaneri right now, and they're just putting bumper to bumper trying to get up there, winding all over the track. They know it's crunch time. They know it's coming down to the final laps, and they really want to get up there. Whoa! A, car, a truck in the grass. He saves it. He's still on the apron. Looks like that's the 30 of Ross Cadeau. Not quite sure yet. Have to look back at it. And as uh, Ted checks on the uh, the action of uh, Cadeau down there, the 07 on the bottom here, the 99 up on the top. This is up here in the front fifth position here. These guys start uh, duking it out for the checkered flag here. When they come by, it's going to be 11 laps to go here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 114 in the books. Dale Smalley's got the lead. Bouchard wants it bad. Bouchard looking on the inside of Smalley up here in the front. Now he switches to the upside, the top side, as, as Smalley uh, comes back up to the front. So Bouchard looking up and down, trying to find a way around the number 69 machine. In the meantime, Mark Montaneri on the top, Gary Bauer on the bottom, the 07 machine. He's going to squeak by for third position. Garen Denton on the rise to the 99 machine. Yep, Gary Bauer finally pushed Mark Montaneri up high and said, oh, excuse me, and that whole bottom line went with him as Mark Montaneri is still stuck up on the high side. The truck that I talked about earlier was the number 10 of uh, Barry uh, Windburn earlier he bounced through the grass jumped up back onto the apron and ended up getting back in line he's currently being shown uh all the way back in 13th position so not too much lost not too much gain just stuck right there in the middle good job holding on to it but looking back up front dale small is still with a tight lead but bruce arbuchard's all over the back end of him trying to make a move trying to get past him on this one and a half mile track we are on lap 116 out of 125 Oh, and the 24 machine, Alan Larson getting wicked loose off the turns here. Almost, oh, contact with the, look, think that the 40, the 46, the 24 makes contact with the 46, 46 into the wall here. Larson doing everything he can to try to keep that number 24 machine up in the top 10. Had a little bit of an incident up there with the number one machine a little earlier, but uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, Alan Larson hard on the throttle here. Uh, to try to get uh, get back up there uh, in the front where he was. He was running in 8th and slipped back to 10th. So Alan Larson doing everything he can to keep that number 24 inside the top 10. Dale Smalley out in front as the laps wind down. Bruce Bouchard is chasing him down, looking all over the place to try to get a position on that number 69 machine. The 11 truck all over the bumper of the 69. I'll tell you what, it is an absolute ocean of blue up here in the uh, first and second position. 
Buddy Waters in that number 46 was the one who was tapped by Alan Larson. He slapped the wall. He's gotten back up to speed, but looking back in the 18th position, looking back up at the front, that's where it's all about. That is what it is going to come down to. Dale Smalley, Bruce Bouchard, and looking back at Garrett Denton in that uh, number four, in, in fourth place right now, in that number 99 machine. They're all trying to get up there. Those are two separate races that we're going to be looking at to the checker tonight. Dale Smalley, Bruce Arvishard, one in those three trucks back there. If they could get up to speed, maybe they could catch them. We ha the, Coming this time by, we'll be on lap 120 out of 125. It is winding down, folks. We are coming down to the final laps. Watching Dale Smalley up here in the front. He's covering the tracks here pretty good. He's making that truck of his really, really wide with the 11 machine right on the bumper. And uh, I tell you what, uh, Dale Smalley, you can watch him coming off the turns here. He uh, kind of takes his time drifting up towards the wall as he tries to cover the bottom to keep the 11 in check. And here he comes right back up in front of the 11. But you know what? The 11 sees that's happening out there. And he's thinking one of these turns, Dale Smalley in that 69 is going to make a mistake. And the 11 is going to get the bottom lane where he needs to be in order to overtake Dale Smalley. In the meantime, running in third, the 07, seeing all that happen up front, hoping for a uh, caution. But uh, we're going to be uh, past that point on the next lap. So uh, no caution will. As I say that, I'm hearing a caution flag does fly out. <laughs> yeah, caution is out on the speedway. Looking back to see exactly uh, who brought out the caution. We will find out in a couple in a couple of seconds yeah and it's going to be the uh, number two machine here and it looks like uh, he had some help here as we roll it backwards try to get a bird's eye view here it's going to be the 88 of michael churchma into the back of the two machine so uh that's going to bring the caution out here and it just uh don't know if this is going to terminate the race, or we may, Ted, wind up with a one-lap shootout here at Atlanta. That would be one crazy uh, one-lap shootout there. But, yeah, uh, the interesting thing is uh, Mark Jackson was a teammate, used to be a teammate uh, with Michael Church on that team, so that's a little interesting to see. Uh, but, yeah, he got spun around, and once again, just absolute bad luck for that 18 truck, Coors Light truck of uh, Jay Anderson as he took a header right into that machine. But we will keep watching. We will keep you all up to date as the laps wind down under caution. We'll uh, go ahead and tell you if this is going to end under caution or if we're going to have a one-lap shootout. It's uh, Lights are still up on the pace car. And so we'll go around at least two more times here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. You bet. Uh, this will complete the first uh, – actually, this will be the first pace lap after the pace car has come out. So uh, – we're right on the cusp here. We'll have to wait and see what race officials, how they're going to call this. I've seen it done, uh, you know, a couple of different ways uh, at some of these tracks. It's kind of hard to predict sometimes, but uh, we may or may not be in for a one-lap shootout. If we are not, unofficially, Dale Smalley would be crowned the winner of the race here tonight with Bouchard finishing second and Bauer finishing third. However, don't Go to print with that, Cowboy, because we're not quite sure how race officials are going to call this race here tonight. Let's drop back to, uh, I want to go back to uh, 28th position. The uh, Unfortunately, the 17 of uh, Gordon Berkey, James Brown, was driving that truck here tonight. Uh, he went out about 25 laps or uh, 25 laps ago. Unfortunately, not going to be able to finish the race here tonight. So, uh, uh I wonder, I'm wondering what Gordon Berkey might have to say to uh, James Brown when uh, they finally meet over there in the garage, do you think? <laughs> I think he might have a little bit uh, more than just, hello, Have a, uh, you had a good race. Like, that's the him. last time That's the last time I give you the keys to my truck, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the last time he'll be slinging those keys over to uh, James Brown anytime yeah. soon. Yeah, you, better, you better make your own uh, qualifying race next time. You bet. And uh, I believe this is going to terminate the race, guys. Uh, we are on lap 124. The pace lights are still on on the pace car. So I believe uh, that is going to terminate the race. Yeah, so, that's it. Uh, I think... Um, 
Oh, we're still waiting on official word from uh, race officials, but uh, we do believe up here in the booth that the race is terminated under caution here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Dale Smalley, uh, uh, unofficially your winner with Bruce Bouchard finishing in second and third going to the 07 at Gary Bauer. Gary Bauer, uh, I'm impressed with this cowboy. He drove an impeccable race here tonight and uh, really did an outstanding job. And uh, it's not often that I see that 07 this far forward, but uh, good uh, good work uh, by Gary Bauer here tonight for sure. Finishing fourth will be Garrett Denton. Top five includes David Wank in the number 20 machine. So uh, as the uh, pace car works itself past the final turn here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Ted, it is over, Cowboy. It'll be lap 125 when they go across, and it's game over for Dale Smalley. Yep, Gary Bauer has been up, was up there all day uh, in that 07 machine. He uh, he started with the pole. He got on up there to uh, and stayed up there uh, the entire race. And so from being up there in first place, sticking up there, he just did a phenomenal job getting that top three finish. So we'll be talking to him a little bit later. And so that will be one. Uh, That'll be one to stick around for and listen to. But that is it. We're on lap 125 out of 125. Lights are on the pace car. That's all she wrote, folks. Dale Smalley will run away with the victory tonight of the second race here uh, within the third season of the Championship Online Racing Association's Sunday Money Series. And so Dale Smalley will run away with the win after last week's uh, second place finish. So that's something to take note of. You bet. 125 left later. And I'll tell you what, uh, ending the race under caution. So that will be five cautions for the night here. Not a bad night for these guys. And I'll tell you what, Cowboy, uh, you got to check these guys out. Cora, Championship Online Racing Association. They qualify three nights a week for a shot at the Sunday money. And I'll tell you, drivers do pay an entry fee. Then a percentage of that fee uh, is up for grabs on Sunday nights by the top 10 finishers here uh, on Sunday. So uh, you can win a trip to the bank. you got to check these cowboys out. You can visit them at their brand spanking new website, accord-racing.com. And uh, while a uh, pace car uh, brings everybody past the start finish line for the very last time here at Atlanta. Let's step away and take a commercial break. When we come back, post-race show from Atlanta, Mo Atlanta Motor Speedway. Boy, that's a mouthful. a serious online racing enthusiast you need Derek Spear Design maker of high quality custom built and 50 caliber strong simulation racing products like button boxes shifter pedals component parts and more the advantage a championship sim racing driver needs rated 10 out of 10 by Inside Sim Racing TV check out his line of top shelf sim racing products reasonably priced at DerekSpearDesigns.com and buckle in for a no nonsense ride DerekSpearDesigns.com today Hey, cowboy.
And we are back live here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and it is over, Cowboy, ending under caution after the 2 and the 88 got into it. That brought uh, Dallas Markle to the front of the line. But I'll tell you what, Cowboy, I'm standing down here with a very proud driver of the number 07 machine who started out on the pole here tonight. Gary Bauer, tell us about your race, bud. Uh, it's bad bit strategy, I guess. I, uh, I had a fast car all night. I just had a good racing luck. I got blocked back a few times, lost some positions. Get back up there, and then uh, it, you know, uh, Dale ran a heck of a race. Dale and Bruce, they uh, both really good drivers. They had good trucks, and uh, it was a good, good, fun race tonight. I enjoyed it. What's the secret to running these mile and, mile and a half tracks here, uh, Gary? As long as you have laps left, uh, patience. Patience is the key here. Patience is the key, and we saw that uh, run out for a couple of these guys, uh, especially up here in the uh, tri-oval. That seems to be the most difficult part of the track. Uh, I think it was back on lap uh, 10, if I'm not mistaken. We had that big one right there in the middle of the tri-oval. A lot of these guys, they get, uh, you know, they, they see a spot open up, and they, they're going to go for it. And forgetting that there's you know 115 laps to go, but you know it's they're here to race, and it's it's hard to to turn it off and turn it on. But patience is still key. Patience is still the key, and I'll tell you what, Gary Bauer, he showed that he had a bucket full of it here tonight at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Who makes it happen for you, partner? Uh, tonight I had uh, the Lone Ranger, the movie The Lone Ranger as a sponsor, and I I want to. Put a shout out to, to the Prater Willie Foundation. We're going to be having our, our uh, charity race for them that we do every year. You guys were involved last year. Um, but this is just an awareness for the Prater Willie Foundation and also to PAD, um, Parents Against Distracted Drivers. Thank you. Outstanding. And uh, congratulations to Gary Bauer. Solid top five finish for him, third place. I'm going to throw it on down Pitt Road. I believe Ted Manning is caught up with our second place driver. Bruce Bouchard. Yeah, I'm standing here with Bruce Bouchard. Talked to you earlier today during an interview. We played that earlier. And uh, congratulations on your second place finish. Uh, so you end up pulling it off like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it was a heck of a race. Uh, Dale's an awesome driver. Same with Gary. A lot of these guys in this field, uh, I could go on. And uh, yeah, patience. I agree totally with Gary was, you know, what helped you know, get this car over here in second place. So what was your, uh, what was your mindset coming into uh, the, those final laps before we hit the caution where Dale Smalley was right in front of you and he is a very dominant driver. Uh, so, I mean, to be right behind him, have those chances to get in front of him and the caution came out. Did you think if you had enough time, you'd be able to get side by side? I it was I, I just wanted to pull away from the field and kind of get some leg room and I knew Dale was you know fast driver I knew he had a good setup under him so I just kind of stuck with him and tried to get away from the rest of everybody and I was saving my stuff as much as I could for those last few laps which fortunately we didn't have but well we tied yeah, well, we talked about earlier uh, in the interview that you were only going to race a limited schedule. So when's the next time do we think we'll see Bruce Bouchard out there on the track? Uh, uh, in a couple weeks. I guess there's a week off here, but I'll definitely be at the uh, the Bristol race with the late models. And I think I'll be able to hit the week after that. It's It's really the last week of this month, I believe. And the week after that, I will not be able to make it. Gotcha. Well, one thing left to ask for, I had to uh, send it back over to JD with our winner. Uh, who does it for you, uh, Bruce, tonight? Uh, I definitely want to give a big thanks to uh, Storm Motorsports. They, uh, all the guys over there, they helped me out today with the setup, and uh, it, it, it would prove to be a good one. So, and uh, yeah, we had a blast. All right, thank you very much. That's Bruce Bouchard with a second-place finish tonight here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. JD's over there in the winner's circle with our winner, Dale Smalley. Dale Smalley. I'll tell you what, Cowboy, you know, wonders never cease. You just put on a hell of a show no matter where you go. You started outside of the top ten here tonight. What did it take to get that machine of yours at number 69 up to the front? Uh, Gary said it just uh, patience, biding my time picking where I wanted to make my passes and not putting my truck in a bad situation. 
And, you know, that little tickle on the tailpipe that you felt here in the closing laps, that was that number 11 machine coming at you. At what point did you start looking back in the rearview mirror and thinking, uh-oh? Uh, about the whole time, but I, I was kind of thinking Bruce had the same idea, try to get away from everybody, and then just me and him settle it that last lap. Uh, he just kind of got the uh, short end of the stick on that one because we had that caution late, and he didn't get to go for it. And Dale, you're a two-time champion here with the Cora, the uh, Championship Online Racing Association. I know you've taken the big check home here a couple of times. What does it take to be a champion with this outfit? Uh, mainly just consistency, patience, and uh, you know, knowing the drivers that you're driving around. You know who you can trust, who you can't, and just kind of driving smart. I'll tell you what, cowboy. From the mouth of a real race car driver, that does it for me. Who makes it happen for you, partner? Uh, this week, I'd like to thank Gary. He helped me out with the setup, and Dallas, my teammate, as always. Uh, 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 just you know, two good guys helped me out a lot today with this. Outstanding. I tell you, what a terrific race here at Atlanta Motor Speedway here tonight, Ted. And, you know, these, these guys never cease to amaze me. They put on a fantastic show every time we come here. We fire up the cameras and uh, go to broadcasting here with the Championship Online Racing Association. Yeah, definitely always wonderful to see uh, the Sunday Money Series out here racing and giving everybody at home a great race to watch. Definitely something to look forward to almost every single night. And uh, so I think we'll be uh, we'll be it'll be just as much as a great race next week uh, when when they head out and uh, bring bring us out to I think they're going to be at uh, Bristol next week, actually. And so uh, that's going to be I mean, if you thought this is a good race at Atlanta, let alone Daytona at the beginning of the season, Bristol with the late models, come on. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I may be up in the booth uh, at Bristol. I don't know yet, but uh, Matt Close should be back with us. Uh, the young man uh, going to college, and uh, he's uh, moving into his dorm this weekend and next uh, down in Florida. So uh, Matt Close should be back in the saddle again uh, the next time we come. If that's the case, I got my front row ticket, Cowboy. I can't wait for the Bristol race with the uh, Cora group here, the Championship Online Racing Association. And to wrap it up, I, th I thought I heard the PA go off, something about uh, paging James Brown. I guess, I think Gordon Berkey may be looking for him. <laughs> yeah, he, he might just be looking for him, but we'll have to stick around for, uh, we'll have to stick around next week to see that. They're going to be there next week at Bristol in the late model series. You thought it was a good race tonight here at Atlanta. Stick around for next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Get ready to head back. Oh, two weeks. Sorry, two weeks. My mistake. Uh, next week is we're going to have a week off. Ne the week after that, two weeks from now, mark it on your calendars. Bristol Motor Speedway. That's going to be one hell of a race in those late model cars. For everybody at the ETV Live studio, thank you for tuning in. I'm Ted Manning along with J.D. Webb. We'll see you in the next two weeks for Bristol Racing and Late Models.